why is hyperglycemia, hyperinsulinemia different on the bike versus off the bike? So why, why can we get away with high levels of blood sugar, high levels of blood insulin when we're riding or working out, exercising, not so much when we're not. And the answer <clears throat> pretty much boils down to nutrient transport. And what I'm talking about specifically is getting nutrients into the cells. So whether it's protein that's broken down into amino acids or fats broken down into fatty acids or carbohydrate broken down into one of its monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, galactose, typically glucose is what we're looking at. There has to be a mechanism that takes these nutrients from outside of the cell and brings them inside of the cell so that, you know, in, in the case of muscle cells, we can perform work. And in order to do so, we have these things called transporters. And in the case of glucose, well, oddly enough, they're, they're termed glucose transporters. And the, the, there's, there's a couple groups, the GLUT and the SGLTs, the SGLTs, there's only a couple of them. They're sodium dependent. We're not even going to talk about those. The GLUT transporters, there's 14 of these bad boys, but we really only care about the, the first five. They're, the, they're, they're by far the most important ones. And within that group of five, it's all about GLUT4. With skeletal muscle, we're looking at this GLUT4 transporter. So if you've ever seen the acronym GLUT4, this is what we're talking about right now. The transporter that takes sugar from outside of the cell, puts it inside of the cell so that we can do work and various other things. Uh, and and that's, that's effectively their job. So you could think of GLUT4 as our removal of glucose from circulation mechanism. And so once inside, <clears throat> or let me, let me back up here. Oh yeah. So this pertains to both muscle cells and fat cells and heart cells too, but to a lesser degree, we're going to focus on muscle cell. This transporter is stored inside of the cell, but it can, it can translocate to the outside of the cell. So inside to outside, and basically it just forms a channel and these little channels from the inside to the outside serve as glucose bridges. And in the case of muscle, once the glucose makes it into the I'm sorry, once the glucose makes it into the muscle, it really has three fates. We can either metabolize it in the moment because we're working hard enough to necessitate its use, or we can store it as fat. If you remember what we talked about, we talked about intramuscular triglyceride stores or intramuscular fat stores. Good in the case of endurance athletes, not so good in the case of sedentary folk. And then finally, we can chain all those little glucose monomers together and make glycogen, you know, a, a big polymer of stored energy that we're going to use in that very fiber down the road. So there are two ways to stimulate this GLUT4 translocation, which is effectively or essentially our ability to uptake glucose into the cell. There's the insulin stimulated route, and this triggers GLUT4 to basically insert into the cell wall to create that little channel. The problem there, and it's not really a problem, the limitation there is that these channels can get saturated with too much glucose. And this is what led us for the longest time to believe that we can only ingest 60 grams of glucose an hour. That's a hard limit. We can't go beyond that. Then we, you know, stumbled onto the fact that, oh, wait, there's also GLUT5 that transports fructose in. Now we can use fructose. What's the limit on that? It seems to be about 30 grams. Okay. Now we're at 90 grams. Now we're finding we can actually push beyond that 90 because there, there aren't such as hard limits as we thought on, on each or both, or maybe one, maybe both of those transporters. Now this back to the GLUT4 translocation, there's another mechanism that doesn't necessarily necessarily rely on insulin and that's the contraction or the exercise induced translocation. So simply exercise increases the expression of this glute force, uh, glute four transporter. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can use insulin to get the, to get sugar into the muscle, or we can simply use physical activity to make other uh, basically signaling changes that take place that make us a little more susceptible to glucose. Mm -hmm. So the point is that during exercise, glucose uptake soars and over the course of consistent exercise, we get an increased expression of this GLUT4 translocator. So we adapt to be able to use more sugar in the cell. Okay. And it's Question also worth that. noting. Yeah, go ahead. Do you also then get better as you take in sugar over time? Like not just to exercise, but also ingesting sugar then improves your ability to do this with sugar. In general or during exercise? During exercise. I, yeah, I would guess so. I, I, would, I would say that's probably part and parcel with the fact that we adapt to or, or we basically increase our expression of this, this transporter. Hmm. So I'm going to say, yeah, based on what I've read so far. Um, and then I also wanted to note that blood glucose uptake is also influenced by our muscle glycogen content. So as we run our muscles down, or if we come into a ride a bit depleted, we're more sensitive to glucose and we can actually process and uptake more glucose. That's, that's worth noting. So this all boils down to two quick, not, not, not so quick description, but two quick takeaways. 
which we have far greater capacity to manage our blood sugar during exercise. And then through consistent endurance exercise, we have a greater ability to control our blood sugar at basically all times. Hmm. So I'm going to say a different way. Don't drink Gatorade all. If you drink Gatorade all day long, probably not good for your health. Drinking Gatorade during a, I'm just using Gatorade because everyone knows Gatorade is during a workout, probably not so bad. And you, they're not the same because of the state of the, the intensity you're putting out in your workout. Mm -hmm. Right, Chad? The, the cell, the cell receptivity to that sugar. The cells have to be primed for it. Otherwise it's just going to effectively bounce off of them and get stored as, as typically adipose tissue or elevate your blood sugar levels and elevate your insulin levels and all sorts of metabolic disorder can ensue. This is one of the, the arguments in favor of making sure that you fuel the work when you're doing the work rather than, you know, doing the sort of binging that you would do to try to, you know, you've just done a huge rise mm -hmm. and then you just take in massive meals. And if you get into like that routine of, I just did a big ride, so I deserve a gigantic burger and fries and a Coke and a milkshake and a, you know what I mean? And it mm -hmm. is nice to have those meals every once in a while, but it's very common to see uh, amateur endurance athletes in many cases, they, they go into this habit of, I can kind of eat whatever I want. We talked about this last week. I can eat whatever I want because I ride my bike. And this is one of the points here is the fact that when your body's in an active state, it's not, you still probably can't eat anything that you want, but it makes sense to throw in the, the stuff that's got a high amount of sugar to use that stuff when you're doing those sort of efforts. But then outside mm -hmm. of it, this isn't it. Uh, this should hopefully educate us on the fact that our body does much better with this sort of stuff in an active state. So it doesn't justify, you know, throwing on, you know, 17 pancakes in the morning with sprinkles and maple syrup, and then doing that routinely, you know, it's, it's tough to be yeah, able I think to manage that. I think a lot of the confusion arises from the fact that we can fuel for the work ahead, but we can also work to store energy for the work ahead too. And that can be done well in advance of whatever we're doing. So we also have to recognize that we, we have a storage capacity. And when we exceed that storage capacity, there aren't too many different directions that these intake, <clears throat> these, these nutrients can go. So you don't have to fuel specifically for something that's just about to happen. You can Give yourself a bit more lead time depending on the sort of activity the sort of carbohydrate you're ingesting how quickly it metabolizes that sort of thing so sadly it's a complex matter if you like that video you should subscribe to our channel there's more where that came from and even like the video down below with a thumbs up or leave us a comment if you want to see race analysis videos click right over here and if you want to get your coaching questions answered click over here and if you want to become a faster cyclist head over to trainerroad.com it works trust us just trust us. <laughs> we guarantee it. Oh, yeah. Or your money back. It's true. Take us up on it.